So let's start right away. If you guys go into books.kphp.org and you go into like the models or the view or the controllers section, you will read through some of the things that, some of the conventions that you have to have in order for KPHP to work on your project. And some of those conventions refer to specifically the database. So you have to have a database with, with constructed with certain conventions in order for your project to work with KPHP smoothless. The less you deviate, or, or the more you deviate from those conventions, the more work you're going to have to do on your configuration. The less you deviate, then the less work you're going to have to do. So, <clears throat> let's see what changes I had to do on my end. So, I'm going to create a backup of my Timex database. Okay, and I'm going to put it in my PHP Projects workspace. This is Timex Backup. And I'm going to make a backup of the Timex Cake PHP database. And I'm going to be saving in the same workspace and I'm going to be comparing them. So you guys have an idea of the changes that I had to go through on the database, just the database. Okay, so I'm going to compare this Timex backup, and I'm going to compare it with Timex Cake PHP backup. And these are the changes. Obviously, the name of the database. No longer called Timex; it's now called Cake PHP. On the department table, now the department table is not called department; it's called departments which means that the first convention is that your tables must be named all lowercase plural name of the entity so if you have an entity called department which i did you have to have a tables a table in the database called departments first convention second convention all keys must be called id id that's the key. That's that's how Cake PHP knows that that field is the key in your table. I uh, I was calling it department code before, and it was character. It was two characters. Not good. It has to be an integer. It has to be a an auto increment, not null, unsigned integer called ID. What else? Um. Obviously, I had to change my data. So, if I had department code AC and department code CS and all that stuff as primary keys, now that's no longer the case. Now I have accounting to be one and customer support to be two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have, you have to change that data. And what I did is I just created the SQL backup and did a global replace of all these things. So it's, it's the best way to do it really. Um, what else? I have employees table and under employees table I remember I had a manager ID. Manager ID field was the foreign key to uh, itself. Remember manager ID is the ID or primary key of my manager. 
So it was like a foreign key to the same table. That's why I call it to itself, to the employee table. Um, and that's not the convention anymore. The convention is that you have to name the name of the entity underscore ID. All foreign keys must have that same format. So I had to call it manager ID field. I had to call it employee underscore ID because it's an, a foreign key unto itself. Um, also, I had the employee ID here as the username. If you guys remember, um, in my PHP project, I will key in the employee ID, which is usually the social security number, as the username to log in into the PHP website. Well, if we're going to make use of the authentication framework or the authentication component on Cake PHP framework, we're going to have to name it username. So Cake PHP will be looking for the field called username, all lowercase, so that it knows that it has to implement authentication on that table, the employees table. Uh, so that's one of the conventions. And also password. If you don't have password, which most of you did, but if you don't have password, then you have to have that field also, password field. So the username and the password fields are the two fields that Cake PHP will look for in a table to know that it has to do authentication on them. Okay. What else? What else do I have to change? Payment. Now it's called payments, obviously. Timesheet. Now it's called timesheets. Now, I already had ID as a key for timesheets, but I had employee ID and I had status code as the two foreign keys to my other tables, the employee table and the department table. And so I had to change that. Obviously, the convention now is employee underscore ID for the foreign key for the time for the employees and um, department underscore ID for uh, as the foreign key for the department table. Uh, what else? What else? Also, if you have a field with two words, you have to camel case them. So I had a field called status code. I had to camel case it as status, all lowercase, and then code, capital C. So if you have compound fields with more than one word, you have to camel case them. And that's about it. So that's all I did as far as the changes to my Timex. And then what I did was I recreated the database. And here is the database recreated. So now this is what the timesheets look like in my Timex Cake PHP. All right. So now the idea is to use Cake PHP console utilities, specifically a utility called Bake, that will automatically generate a website for us where we can do the CRUDs, the, the create, the read, the update, and the deletes of all these entities. So imagine that. A utility that goes into the database, sees departments, employees, payments, timesheets, and their relationships through keys and foreign keys, and builds a website for us in Cake PHP where we can go and do the CRUDs on all of them. How do we do that? So the first step is modify our database. We just did. The second step is bake our website. To do that, we're going to have to download Cake PHP, which I did, and I hope you guys already downloaded it few weeks ago when we started 
covering KPHP. Here it is, KPHP 2.2.3. When you unzip it, this is a zip file. When you unzip it, I unzipped it into my workspace. My workspace is PHP projects. So here it is, KPHP 2.2.3. If you investigate further into this folder, you will find that there is a library, and under that there is a cake folder. In here you will find the entire cake PHP source code. Remember, cake PHP is open source, and therefore you have the ability to take a look at the source code. And I welcome you to do that so you can get familiar with the framework. Basically, uh, a model view controller framework in PHP. But one of the folders, and this is the one that I'm interested in, is called console. And in the console, you have several utilities, command utilities, that you can use. And one of them is called bake. And that's what we're going to be using. And so I have to tell Windows where to find the cake console. And the way that I do that is I go into, like in Windows XP, and it's very similar to Windows 7 as well. I have to go into my computer properties, and then in the advanced tab, I go into the environment variables, and in the environment variables, I have to make sure that I include in the path that KPHP folder. So, you know what? This is very difficult to see, so I am going to copy it and put it in Notepad, somewhere in Notepad. All right, this is my path. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and as you guys can see, in here I have included in the path. I have included c colon backslash php projects backslash cake php 2.2.3 slash library slash cake slash console. Windows needs to know where that console is, so you have to add it to the path. Once you do that, then you can open up a command prompt. and type cake and you will know what you're talking about it will say oh welcome to cake php version 2.2.3 console blah 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 the app that you're looking at is alvaro and obviously that's not the app that i want to create i want to create cake php so i'm going to go into my PHP projects, which is my workspace. Okay. And I'm going to tell Cake that I'm going to build a new Cake PHP project. So how do I do that? It's the dash app folder. So let's do that. Dash app and then the folder. So the the path is going to be C column backslash uh PHP projects backslash um we're gonna call it Timex Cake. Yeah, Timex Cake. All right. 
So now notice that it says, okay, now I know the app is Timex Cake, the working is here, the root is here, and this is the core. The core is where the cake PHP is. Your working path should be the same as your application path. To change to your path, use the app parameter, which we just did, and it gives us an example. Um, and so that's it. We're going to let's include the app. So we're going to do cake dash app, and this is going to be the path to the my app, and I want you to bake it. So welcome to KP. Okay, Timex cake warning. Fail to open directory. Bad file descriptor. It doesn't seem to find the. Uh, what is the path to the project you want to bake? So by default, it's going to be Timex cake. So basically, what it's saying is, I cannot find the folder. And I say, yeah, no kidding. I haven't created it yet. So it will say, what is the path to the project you want to bake? So the, the path to the project I want to bake is that one, the one in parentheses. So that's fine. Um, let me try to make this a little bit smaller so that it fits the screen. There you go. You guys can see it. Um, so now I say, yeah, that's that's going to be it. Timex cake. So what is the path to the directory layout you wish to copy? And right now we don't have any templates, so we're just going to go with the console template default, whatever that is. And then we'll it says uh, we'll be copied to Timex. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. So by default, yes, it's fine. Um, and now it's creating Timex Cake. So good. So basically, created the Timex Cake Cake PHP project. It, it it generated the random hash was created, and the random seed was also created. Remember, that's one of the two things that you have to do when you install Cake PHP. And then it says, um, you know, the app console Cake PHP path is set. And then, um, and then it created the index and the test PHP, and that's about it. So your database configuration was not found. So we're going to have to do that. Um, database configuration. So the name of the database is going to be. You guys already know this. Timex underscore cake. PHP, is that where it is? Timex underscore KPHP. Yep. So that's the name of the database. And it's going to be a MySQL. So hit enter. That's the default. Persistent connection? No, it's not going to be persistent connection. Uh, what's the database host? It's local host. Yep, that's the default. Port? I'm not going to specify the port because I will keep the default, which is 3306. Uh, user? Um, the default is root, yes. The password, no password. The password you supply was empty. Use an empty password? Yes. I want an empty password. I don't want to have to remember all the passwords from my uh, students. Um, database name? Wait a minute, didn't you ask me for the database name already? Ooh, this was the name of the database configuration. Oh, I think I messed that up. Okay, no problem. Database name is Timex underscore KPHP. Table prefix? No, no table prefix. Table encoding? No table encoding. The following database configuration will be created. Wow, all that stuff. Does it look okay? No, it does not look okay. I want default to be the name of the database configuration. Yes, I want my SQL. Persistent, no. Database host, local host, port, user, password. Yes, blank password. Database name is Timex underscore KPHP. Table prefix, no. Table encoding, no. Does this look okay? Yes, now it looks okay. So by default, it's going to connect to my Timex KPHP database. Do you wish to add another database configuration? No, I do not. All right. So it created the configuration database.php 
in my Tamix cake and the following database can will be created that does not look, look okay yeah go ahead it looks fine um, I guess it saved the the other configuration that's fine do you wish to add another database configuration no I don't want to use that. okay so the file is exists do you want to override it no I don't want to override it and that's it okay so now it has it's done with baking let's see what it created I'm going to go back to my workspace Good. I'm going to go to Timex oh it created Timex cake look at this created an index PHP it created Under config, it created a database PHP. We're going to look at it. Oh, perfect. A default configuration, database MySQL, persistent false, local host, root, no password, and the name of the database is Timex Cake PHP. So we are good. We are good now. Okay, so what do we do now? And if you take a look at the rest of the uh, the stuff that was created, it created a controls, I'm sorry, a controllers folder with pages controller and app controller, and it created also a model, an app model, and it created also a view for pages home CTP. I mean, this is the this is what it's called the the skeleton of a cake PHP project. In fact, you know what? I'm going to hit it. Timex cake PHP. I am going to hit it with my browser. Timex cake. This is what it looks like. Timex cake. It looks very similar to the cake. PHP 2.2.3 that we downloaded a few weeks ago. It basically goes and looks at what version of PHP you have, and if you have a temporary directory created, if your file engine has, um, you know, is being used, and whether do you have a database configuration or not, and whether it's cake is able to connect to the database or not. If you get all these greens, you're good. That means you are good. Alright, so that's my Timex cake skeleton. We're not done yet. Now we have to bake our entire Timex cake PHP project out of the database, out of the departments, timesheets, employees, payments, tables that I have in there. So how am I going to do that? I am going to change my directory into Timex cake. And then I'm going to say, hey, cake, I want you to bake. And now I get a different menu. The menu now says, oh, you want me to do a model and a view and a controller or these are all the different options that I have out of the database in fact what I want to do is I want to do them all I wanted to create the model and the view and the controller and the fixtures and the test cases and absolutely everything for my Timex cake so I'm gonna quit from this run and I'm going to say all cake bake all and fair enough it's going to go and look into the project Timex cake it's going to go into the database and it's going to see oh okay I'm going to try to bake all of them the possible models based on your current database are these one department two employee three payment four timesheet enter a number from the list above and I'll create everything for you so we're going to start with the simplest one 
which is department. Okay, department. Baking model class for department. It says, okay, PHP unit is not installed. You want to bake unit tests files even though PHP, PHP, PHP unit is not installed? Yeah, that's fine with me. So hit enter, which is the default. And look at this. It actually created the department fixture. It created the department test. It created the department's controller. Keep going. It created the department's controller test. It created the, the, the index, the view, the add, and the edit views for my departments. Isn't that cool? So it pretty much baked all four departments. So what does that mean? If we go into our Timex cake, and instead of hitting the root, what you do is you hit the root slash departments. Look at this. Now you have a website that knows about departments. In fact, you can see the departments that are in the database. Accounting is one, customer support is two. This is almost the same thing that I get on my query browser when I go into departments. In fact, it's a little bit more. I can view each one individually. I can edit each one individually. I can delete it if I need to. Or I can create a new department if I want to. And it shows me the queries that it executes in order to produce this view? That's really awesome. So now how about if we bake the rest of our entities? I'm going to do employees now. I'm just going to hit enter through all the defaults. Now all employees are baked. And then I'm going to do payments. Payments is done. And then I'm going to finally do timesheets. There you go. So now our entire Cake PHP project has been built. In fact, if we go into Timex Cake into the controllers, you will see timesheets controller, payments controller, Pages control, which is the skeleton. We're not going to use that one. Employees controller, departments controller. It has created all the controllers for me. And if I go into the model, it has created department, employee, payment, and timesheet for me. This is pretty cool. And and now I can go into my Timex cake and hit timesheets and look at this I'm being presented with all the timesheets that come from the database all of them just like if I were using my SQL query browser better yet Notice that the tables that are created listing all the timesheets have links. Have links to employee and to department. Because it detected that timesheets have foreign keys to employee and to department. So I can actually take go into timesheet number one and click on the employee that owns that timesheet, Ajay Kumar. And I did not get the employee. What happened here? 
If you want to customize this view, database error. Okay, I'm not sure what happened here, but I should be able to go into a Jake Mars. And then if I go into information technology, yeah, information technology. This is the department information technology, and these are all the related timesheets for information technology. So it's pretty good, pretty awesome. Oh, I know what happened to. I know what happened to a Jake Kumar. We're gonna we're gonna solve that issue in a few minutes. Um, but that's pretty good because that means that I can list all my employees as well. No, I can't. There's a problem with employees right now. Um, I can list all my timesheets and I can take a look at the different departments. Like if I go to customer support, this is what customer support looks like. And these are all the related timesheets. So these timesheets are for customer support work. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that's a lot of functionality right off the bat that we have baked. So now we have to fix a few issues here. And one of the issues is that timesheet, the model, I'm sorry, employee, the model, <coughs> this is what it looks like. This, is, this was baked for us. Um, it's class employee that extends from the app model. You know that. And these are the validations. The validations are taken right off the bat from the database. So, for instance, name should be not empty. And there's no specific rules. And email is not empty. And employee type, password, and all that stuff. Notice that it also has the relationships. The relationships between the models. And, and this is something that I need you guys to read very carefully. Um, because models, you, you go into the associations, it will go through all the different relationships the models have to each other. So it, ha it has one relationship, the belongs to relationship, um, they has many relationship. And this goes back to um, our domain model. If you guys remember, in my wiki, in my wiki, I had a domain model, and in the domain model, I specified um, the relationships between the different tables. So, um, for instance, employees had a one-to-many relationship unto itself. No, I'm sorry, a one-to-one -one relationship unto unto itself. Why? Because an employee had one manager, which was also an employee, and uh, there was a one, there was a one to many relationship between the employee and the, and the between the department and the employee, because one department could have many employees, or you can see it from the other end, many employees work for one department. And these relationships are associations in Cake PHP. And you can specify them. Has many, um, has and has and belongs to many. These are all the different types of uh, associations or relationships between the models. Has many through. And our cake, our bake, utility has created as many as it can of those relationships. So it has created the belongs to. So it says, OK, the foreign key is employee ID, and the class that it belongs to, it's employee. And this is where it's having problems, because it's, it's going on to itself. Um, and it has many. Has many says, OK, the foreign key is employee ID, and 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 It's not really has many, but it has one. That's the problem, that it uh, has one. So 
an employee has one um, manager um, manager but anyway we're gonna fix that so um, I have already made the fixes here it is employee and so basically what I have to do is I have to modify the employee that belongs to relationship which it's called employee uh, we're gonna have to call it manager because it, that's what it really is it, it belongs to a manager and also in the has many the relationship that one boss has many employees the relationship is really called reportees so we're not going to call it employee we're going to call it reportees so let's do that let's copy that one and let's copy that one and that should take care of the problem so we're gonna go and hit it again and we're gonna go into J Kumar so now we can go and look at a J Kumar employee okay and we can see all the related employees which doesn't really make sense but I think I have to modify that anyway but now it's when we list employees it doesn't break now we can see the employees so the problem was that it had problems with the relationship with the auto relationship unto itself um, so now I can take a look like Mike Dover oh no the Mike Dover's a problem there. We have to fix also the the views for the list. So one, and we go, we have to call it manager. We we don't call it employee now. We call it manager. Notice that. So that's how the relationships are being addressed in the list. Manager, and what else? Uh, that's about it. So now we hit it again. And now notice that Mike Dover, the boss, is Teresa Walker. And Ajay Kumar, the boss, is Teresa Walker. And Teresa Walker, the boss, is Tom Brady. And we can go and look at Teresa Walker. And it will show Teresa Walker's data. Okay and the related I think the related are not good either the related should should show all the employees that report to Teresa Walker so let's fix the view as well the view the view so we're going to compare it to fair enough this is what we have to do instead of echoing employee we have to echo manager and instead of showing a link to employee we should be showing a link to manager now on the bottom that's where it shows all the related employees it should not be employee ID it should be manager and for each employee no but for each reportee remember the relationship reportees that's where it comes into place okay so we just save it and then again refresh employees Mike Dover his boss is Teresa Walker we're going to Teresa Walker here it is and now it shows all the um, 
employees that are reportees to Teresa Walker. All these guys report to Teresa Walker. Alright. So, that's pretty cool. I mean, we didn't have to do much changes. Uh, we can list all the timesheets. We can take a look at the employee information through the timesheet. It's it's a lot. I mean, it's all the CRUDs. Absolutely a, a, a fully functional website with all the CRUDs for all the entities involved in my system. So that's pretty cool. That's the second phase. So the first phase was modify the database. The second phase was bake the website out of the database. And here it is. And we have to do a few changes, especially when there is an auto relationship. But it wasn't that much. Um, and now we're going to go into the third phase. And the third phase is actually how do we get from a website like this where we're s where we are showing a list of timesheets to a website like this. Where I show where I show the list of timesheets just for Mike Dover with this look and feel with this information. So we have to go from here from here to here. So obviously the first thing that we have to do is we have to be able to import from our Timex PHP website, we have to be able to import our logos, our cascading style sheets, our JavaScript, our menus, our footer, header, all that stuff. So where do we do that? We have to do that in a place called the layouts. So under the view, you have to go to a folder called layouts. And if you take a look at the default layouts, default layout is the one that it's being used all across your website. There's one called the flash layout. There's another one called the error layout, which you can customize depending on whether you want to do flash and errors, or the Ajax layout. Right now, we're going to be just concentrating on the default layout. So if we go into the default layout, and I'm going to compare it, from the bare bones generated by Bake. And I'm going to compare it to what kind of changes I made in order to make it look and feel like Timex PHP. This is it. All right. So instead of putting Cake PHP, the Rapid Development PHP framework, what I did is I put Timex, Timex Management System. Instead of having uh, an HTML helper include the cascading style sheet cake that generic, what I did is I put my cascading style sheet default and menu. And our bare bones didn't have any JavaScript included, but my KPHP does. My Timex PHP does. So this is where you include your jQuery and your menu, uh, JavaScript, all that stuff that it's in here. Timex, PHP, and you go into my styles, you will see that I have a default CSS and a menu CSS. I need those, those two default and menu to be included in my default layout. 
also into my JavaScript folder, you will see that I use jQuery and menu JavaScripts. So you need to include them as well, jQuery and menu. What else? I commented out the meta, CSS, and script from the bare bones. I'm not going to use theirs. And then what else? Remember I had a menu? I had a header and inside a menu? Well, I just pretty much took the bare bones, this one, um, KPHP, the Rapid Development PHP Framework, whatever. This is, if you guys go and take a look at it. This is where the default here it is. Cake PHP, the rapid development PHP framework. That comes from the layout. And this stuff over here. Uh what else? Uh, a link. This is a link to the Cake PHP the Rapid Development PHP framework. This link. See that? So I I'm, I'm getting rid of that. And I'm just basically replacing it with my menus. So um, I just went into my menu.html. So back to my Timex PHP under my includes. I have a menus.html if you guys remember. This is what it looks like. Basically had the title, the header part, you had my menus, enter hours, timesheet list, all that stuff. I just basically copy it and paste it right here in my layout. And I also had to keep the same layout that I had in my in my regular PHP um website. So if you go if you go to my Timex PHP website, like to the signing or the uh, or the uh, the uh, timesheet list, if you take a look at using Firebox, if you take a look at the layout, I have to keep that same layout. So uh, the body, the entire body has a header. Look at the header which I just copied, right, in the layout, in the default layout. It has my logos, it has um, my menu, and then there's a page div, which is all this section here that contains a sidebar and the, and the actual content and all that stuff, everything except the footer, pretty much. So I have to keep that same layout, the div page, and then I have to have the div content, which is this one, and the div sidebar, which is this one, and um, a small div in here, and then the footer. So I have to keep that same layout that I had in my regular PHP and copy it over in my default layout. That's how I had to include, for instance, this div page, which my bare bones didn't have. Uh, the div content it did have, so I just leave it like, like that. And then I had to add my sidebar. I added my sidebar. And then the footer for the bare bones contained something like uh, cake power, whatever, whatever, a link to cakephp.org. Um, It was this one, I believe. Um, where is it? This one. Cake power. Cake PHP power, whatever. It's a link. This is the footer. So I had to get rid of that footer as well and replace it with my footer which is, you know, Timex Online Timesheet System, Acme Company, whatever, whatever. 
so let's do that. Let's pretty much now it has a different look. All right, so it still has this weird content. Now it has my Timex doesn't look okay. And you guys understand why, right? Because I haven't copied my skin style sheets and my and my images and my whatnot. So I'm gonna take all my images. Folder. And I'm gonna copy it into my cake. Timex cake stuff going on here. Timex cake, here it is. So Timex cake has a web root, and under web root, I'm going to paste my images. And I'm going to get rid of that IMG folder. I don't need that IMG folder. Okay. And then back to my Timex PHP, what else do I need? I need my JavaScripts. them to have JS and uh, also my CSS both I'm going to copy them into my web root CSS and get rid of cake generic bye bye cake generic and paste all right so now we hit it again ah look at this now we're baking. Now we have our header with our menus and the JavaScript working. Now I have my sidebar. Cool. And I have an ugly content. Of course. Because right now I have not changed my index, which is my home page. Okay, but we're, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Notice that it was just a matter of copying the right uh, JavaScripts, the cascading style sheets, the images, modifying the layout, and now we're here. So if I type employees, no, let's do timesheets. This is what timesheets look like. Mm hmm. So we're getting closer because remember this is where we want to get. This is where we want to get and this is where we are. We want to get where we are. And so you are going to see that it's very simple. Now we're going to have to just modify the view that shows this ugly, table-looking, boring uh, page into something much more user-friendly like this. Okay. So we're going to have to go into our... This is the list. Okay. So it's the index. So we're going to compare that index, which is the bare bones, to timesheets index. And these are the changes that I made. So basically, um, <coughs> the title of the page is going to be timesheets list. Right? Let me see. Yeah, it's not timesheets, right? It's timesheets list. So I had to modify that. And then I'm going to be echoing the employee name. Here it is the employee name. I have to echo that employee name. In fact, and I just noticed that I'm missing something here. I'm going to edit this line and I'm going to add I'm going to add employee space 
colon. I am missing that. Employee space colon. Cool beans. Okay, so the title has to change. The employee has to change. Okay, what else changed? The headings. Look at these headings. The bare bones had absolutely all the fields in the table. And I don't really want to show all the fields, if, to be honest with you. I don't want to show all those fields. I just want to show period ending date, hours, total number of hours, department, the name of the department, the status of the timesheet, and the timesheet ID. That's all I need. So, instead of showing ID, employee, status code, period in the day, department, all that stuff, I am going to just show this. Period in date, hours, which we don't have now. That's something that we don't have yet. Because remember, the table shows minutes from each day. And in here, we're showing total of hours for the week. So we have to do somehow a calculation there. But we're going to call it hours. Department, the status code of the timesheet, and the ID of the timesheet. Okay, and this is all using the paginator uh, component. That's another component in Cake PHP that is going to allow you to. It's going to give you a whole bunch of functionality that you did not have to write one single code for. And then what else do we have? Oh, so so let me do that. Let me let me modify it. Okay, so it's modified. And then basically it's going to go through all the timesheets. Yep one by one for each. And then the plain vanilla one was showing the timesheet ID and the status code and and he was showing minutes for Monday and minutes for Tuesday and all that stuff. And he was showing the actions like I want to view, I want to edit, I want to delete. Let me see where those are. Yeah, here they are. I want to I want to I want to view, I want to edit, I want to delete, all that stuff. And then the new timesheet, and I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need any of all that stuff. So what do I need then? What I need is actually the period and end date, right? And then a calculation of the minutes Monday plus minutes Tuesday plus minutes, uh, all that stuff. Ooh divided by 60. I'm missing that piece. Okay. I am missing that piece. Because that's what I want to do. I want the total of hours. So I'm going to copy that. And then what else do I need? I need the um, a link to the department name. Actually, the department name. Look how easy it is to find the department name. It just basically says, okay, from the timesheet that I'm presenting right now, go into something called the department, which I know every timesheet has. And inside that department, go into the field called name, which I know every department has. And it's just going to show that, the name of the department. Pretty cool. And it will create the link using the HTML helper. It will create a link to that department if you want to take a look at particular department information. And that's taken care of by the department's controller and the action is view. And you just pass the department ID as a parameter. It's so easy with Cake PHP. It, it's almost like talking in English. Uh, so I'm going to copy that. And then you're going to display the status code. Copy that. You know what? I'm just going to copy pretty much all this stuff. Okay, so we have the same. Same. What else? Um, I got rid of this section. That's the section that says, oh, do you want to create a new timesheet? Do you want to list employees? I don't want that. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to save it. And now. 
I'm going to hit it again. Wow. Look at this. Is this awesome or what? This is what timesheets list has been transformed into. This is our Timex cake. And it's been what? 40 minutes? It's been 40 minutes since I started baking this project. And I'm already here. And the new timesheet list. So this is where we want to get. This is where we are. This is where we want to get. This is where we are. Very close. Now the really cool thing about this is that I'm actually getting a lot more functionality than what I'm getting here in my regular PHP. Why? Because I can actually sort any I can sort this table by any one of these fields. Peer ending date, status code, or ID. You wanna see it? Let's sort it by peer ending date. So now it goes from two thousand six to two thousand twelve. If you hit it again it will present it in descending order. 2012 to 2006. Extra functionality that we weren't able to do or that we never implemented using our regular PHP. Same as status code. You want to sort them by status code? Here they are. All the accepted, all the cached, all the pendings, all the submitted. You want to sort it by ID? Here it is. In ascending order. And I did not write one single line of code to do this. This is all taken care of by the paginator component of Cake PHP. Okay. Now the really bad thing is I am showing you everybody's timesheets, not just the J. Kumar's. And that's wrong. The reason why I'm doing that is because I have not implemented login. I have to implement login so that I can log in as a jkumar and then modify my code to authorize a jkumar to take a look at the timesheet list of only his timesheets. And that's what I'm not going to do. But we are very close. We are very close. Okay. So how do we accomplish that? For this part, I need you guys to take a look at how simple authentication and authorization application was done in the blogs, the blogs tutorial. And it goes step by step on all the changes that you have to do in your blog website so that now you can include a user and log in and log out a user and only allow the owner of the post to edit his own post and nobody else can edit it. In a similar fashion we're going to do the changes in Timex Cake PHP so that it only shows the timesheets for its owner. So what are all the changes that we had to do? First of all, <coughs> our recently baked project automatically generates an app controller under the controller folder. And I'm going to compare that with one that I already had generated before. And here it is. Basically you have to say, okay, app, which at this point it was just class app controller extends from controller. That's it. That was the only code. This app controller is the one that will all the controllers in my Cake PHP website will inherit it from. So if you go and look at timesheets controller, 
type change controller extends from the app controller. So all the functionality that is in the app controller, it will inherit into timesheets controller. Okay. So all the code that you put in here, all the controllers in your website will inherit. And basically what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to add a component. So we declare the public, actually what we're doing here is we are overriding the controller, the plain vanilla cake PHP controller, we're overriding this variable called the components variable. And basically it's an array. And we're going to say, okay, we're going to need a session and KPHP knows what a session is, and we're going to need the auth, the auth component. And KPHP knows what the auth component is. But it's going to be a special type of auth. So session is the plain vanilla one, but the auth, we need to specify a little bit more configuration to it. So we, we, we indicate it's going to be an array, and we're going to say, I want you to authenticate and I want you to authenticate employees. So you're going to provide an array where you say the form that you're going to authenticate is going to be in, it's going to be employee, and the user model is going to be employee. So if if you had you you wouldn't have to do this. In other words, if you had a user model, but we don't have a user model. We have an employee model. Therefore, you have to say, okay, my user model is going to be employee. Okay? And so employee should be an entity that should have username and password as two fields. And then you're going to say also, okay, by the way, the after you log in successfully, I want you to redirect me to the timesheets controller to the action index. That's the one that lists all the timesheets. In other words, timesheet list. And when I log out, I want you to redirect me to the controller employees in the action login. So we're going to have to implement, obviously, under the employees controller, we're going to have to implement the login function, which we don't have yet at this point. And um, also authorize um, authorize all the controllers. Mm. Now we're going to have to also provide a function called is authorized, and is authorized receives as a parameter an employee, and you basically ask whether it's been set, the employee type is being set for that employee, and whether the employee type is equal to H. H means hourly. If it is, then it's authorized, and you return true. And we're going to see how that plays you know, comes into play later on. And then we're also going to have to add a function called the before filter. The before filter is a function that gets executed by the auth component before it does any login action or any 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 particular authentication issue. So in this case, the before filter for this app controller is, okay, auth, I want you to, the login action, I want you to take me to timesheets index. That's the login action after after I log in. So I basically the same thing as the login redirect. And the logout redirect is going to be the same one, employees login. I think this is redundant. We can do it in either or. We don't need to do it in both places. Um, so I'm going to copy this stuff, stuff I need. So that's those are the modifications that I did to the app controller. And then we go into the employees controller. And in the employees controller, we also have a before filter. So when we touch the employees controller and we are about to execute anything inside the employees controller, the before filter is the first thing that gets executed. The rest of the stuff will not get executed until 
until the before filter is executing. What does the before filter say? Before filter say, okay, execute the before filter from the parent, which is app controller. And if you guys remember the before filter, that one is the one that specifies, you know, the login redirect, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then when it comes back from executing the before filter from the parent, it's going to say, okay, authentication component, I want you to allow without authentication. I want you to allow login and add functions in this in this employees controller file. So basically I'm allowing login this function and I'm allowing add this function. Add. Those are the only two that I can execute without authentication. If I want to execute index, I have to be authenticated. If I want to execute view, I have to be authenticated. If I have if I want to execute logout, I have to be authenticated. So why do we do this? Because if you think about it, login, you shouldn't have to be login in order in order to log in. So you should allow login to anybody. And also add. What is employees add? This is what it's typically called registration. You want to allow employees to add, or, or you want your users to be able to add an employee if they want, if you want them to register. So login and add are the only two functions in the employees controller that will not need authentication. So what does the login look like? Well, you basically say, okay, go into the request. And if it's a post, right, which should be, login should be a post. It should never be a get. And I hope everybody gets that. Otherwise, go back to CSIS 3020 next year. Um, if it's a post, then what you're going to do is you're going to ask authent the authentication component to log in your user. Just that. Imagine. Login auth component has a function called login, and and login automatically will know that oh it refers to the employee, and the employee should have a username and a password, and I'm going to be able to hash it and then hash it and do this and that, and it will do the entire login for you. That's login. If you guys remember all the stuff, all the PHP code that you had to write in order to create authentication back in week 10 or something like that, or week 9, this is the kick PHP version, auth login. So if it's successful, if the login is successful, then redirect to whatever I tell authentication component to redirect. And that's it. So it will take me to login redirect, which, if you guys remember, that was controller timesheets and action index. If it's not able to authenticate me because the password does not belong or whatever, for whatever reason, then you're going to set the flash to invalid username or password. And the flash is something that shows up automatically in the layout, remember? All right, and what about logout? Logout is just to redirect. You tell the auth component, please log me out, and then redirect me to the whatever redirect I need to go when I'm logged out. And that's it. That's it. Those are the changes in the employees controller. So employees controller are the ones that ha employees controller is the one that has the concept of login and logout. So I'm going to copy that. And this is all code that is available on the blog tutorial as well, because we had to do the same thing in the blog tutorial. Um, in the add, I remember in the add we had to change employee to manager. Remember, you gotta be able to ask for your manager. And in the edit as well, in the edit, you wanna be able to ask for the manager. These are changes from the from the uh, relationship employee to employee. Okay, so that's it. What else?
um, in the timesheets controller. Let me see what do we have to do in the timesheets controller. I think in the timesheets controller we have to indicate whether you have to be logged in or not. Yes, correct. And also we have to indicate just to show the timesheets for Mike Dover. So how do we do that? Okay, basically we provide the is authorized. So we're providing here who is authorized uh, to add timesheets. This is code that was copied from the blog tutorial. How come it doesn't have a before filter? It would have been nicer to do it with the before filter. Okay, I guess it's done through the is authorized. Um, so in here, what it says is all users can add timesheets. So everybody should be able to add their own timesheet. I'm not sure about this. I think you should be able. You have to be. Uh, you have to be logging to add. I'm not going to copy that code for now. The owner of the timesheet can edit and delete it. Yeah, I need to do that. And how how do we accomplish that? Well, um, we ask whether the action that we're about to execute in is authorized. Oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, we need to do that. We need to do that. We need to be able to provide the is authorized to tell who is authorized to do what in this in this timesheets controller. I would have done it with filters. It, it seems that before filters is much easier than than. But basically, uh, what I'm saying is, if you are logged in, you are authorized, or all all employees are authorized to add a timesheet. But but if you want to edit or delete, it has to be your own timesheet. So we have to create what it's called an is own by functionality in the timesheet. So in the timesheet we're gonna have to provide a function call is owned by that will check whether the timesheet being provided as a parameter is owned by this employee. Okay, so that's 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 something that we need to and otherwise just you know return the is authorized from the parent which is controller. So that's taken care of. And now what about when we are listing the timesheets? When we are listing the timesheets, we want to be able to just show the timesheets that belong to the user that is logged in. How do we do that? Well in the index, instead of just providing all the timesheets, which is what we, what the uh, bake provided us automatically, you just say, hey, all timesheets, paginate. What we have to do is we have to modify that timesheets um, and and just find the ones that that are authorized. So what we do is we tell the session, hey session, I need you to read the ID of the guy that is logged in. And then you construct a query. This is very similar to the query. Or this is one way of doing it, but I don't like this way really. What the way that I like is is by doing the timesheet find. I think that's that's better. Where we say, okay, uh timesheet find all and but there are some conditions and the condition is the timesheet has to be pending um and also owned by I don't think I have implemented this one. And also owned by the user that is logged in. Yeah, I'm not going to include that because I have not tested that one yet. And in the add, obviously in the add, you want to, um, before you add a timesheet, you want to be able to make sure that the employee ID of the timesheet is equal to whoever 
to the user ID of whoever is authenticated so that the timesheet it's being marked as timesheet belongs to the current logged in employee so that that we do need to copy okay so that's basically all the changes that we have to do so now let's go into the models and see what changes we have to do in the models and, and you will see many of these changes already done in the blog tutorial uh, in the authentication part of the blog tutorial so if we go into the models we're going to see that timesheet uh, Model timesheet. Um, all we have to do is provide, you know, keep the rest of the stuff the same. We just have to provide the is owned by. So, what is the is owned by function? Well, basically, you pass a timesheet in an employee two parameters to the is owned by, and it has to return true or false, indicating whether the timesheet belongs to the employee. How do you do that? Very simple. You tell, okay, this, which belongs, which refers to the timesheet that we're looking at, if it has a field ID, okay, and then basically you're, prov you're um, testing the field ID to this array. And this array contains, okay, ID, timesheet, so this ID the value is equal to the timesheet being provided as a parameter and the employee ID which is another field in uh, in 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 the timesheet is uh, belongs to this employee which is being passed as a parameter so basically what you're saying is make sure that this that the fields that the fields ID and employee ID match to the timesheet and the employee ID is being passed as a parameter. If they're equal to this timesheet, then yes, it, it's owned by by this fellow. If the ID or the timesheet ID do not match, then it will return false. Obviously, it will not be equal to the timesheet. Um, so, so we're going to copy that. And this is also something that it's available through the blog tutorial as well. Uh, did we have to do any changes to the employee to the employee model? Uh, let me see. Let me check whether we did some changes to the employee parameter. I'm being the employee. Um, yeah, and basically, and all the models where you are going to be using in all the models where you're going to be using the authentication component you have to tell it it uses the authentication component so um, we have to do that uh, what else what else username and password yeah that's the same Oh, before save. Okay, the employee. Before you save an employee, you gotta make sure that you generate um, an encrypted password. So basically, um, in the login process, and we're gonna see this later on. In the login process, we're gonna have to execute from the employee model. We're gonna have to execute the before save function. And the before save is a function that will run before anything else is run on the model when you're about to save an employee, a new employee in the database. And so basically what it says is uh, before you save it, I want you to make sure that password is set, first of all. So if it's set, out of the data that we are about to 
save if there is a password data and if it's set then I want you to do the following I want you to assign to that password the authentication component call of the password function and this password function from the authentication component basically what it does it takes whatever you pass as a parameter and encrypts it so this is the equivalent to our SHA-1 um, a function that we had in our PHP uh, in our regular PHP project basically you pass the password as a parameter you call the password function of the authentication component it will encrypt it and then you just uh, assign it to the password data before it's saved so that's something that we also have to do okay and finally um, to be able to log in we need a view under the under the employees and um, what's the name of that view well it should be login remember employees controller has a function called login and every and every function has to have an associated view so we're gonna have to add the view the login view which if you guys look at timex cake view employees we do not have we have the add the edit the index and the view but we do not have the login so we're gonna have to copy that view into the employees and what does that view look like well that's the one that basically that's the one that basically says okay I'm going to create a form for an employee okay and notice how simple it is to create a form with all the fields that you need and then submit them you have to say okay create a form call employee and these are the fields that are going to be part of the employee um, I'm going to have a, uh, a label that says please enter your username and password and I'm going to have an input tag called username and another one called password and then when this form is ready it should take me to login I'm sorry no that's not that's not what that's not what it says um, um, register we creating an HTML link here called register which will take me to the employees controller and the action is add obviously that's what registration is it goes to the employees controller and add this new um, I'm sorry login is the one that uh, that sends the entire username and password to the employee login but w you can also register from here and the register is a link that takes me to the employees add and remember the employees add is one of the functions under the employees controller that can be done without being logged in in other words registration so that's it so now let's hit timesheet list Oh, uh, one more thing. I think I have to modify uh, my index as well so that my index is no longer like that. It should not be timesheet list, it should be uh, login. So to do that, we go into our um, index PHP. This should be the same, I think. 
I'm not sure yet. Uh, yeah, but I think I think it should be the same. Uh, if we compare it, yeah, this should be the same because basically this one is this one is the one that starts everything. And all it's doing is it's requiring requiring the index PHP out of the web root directory. That's basically what it's doing. So that's the one that I have to modify, the one out of the root directory, web root. This one, index. So if we go into the timex cake, web root, and take a look at that one. Um, no, that one has not even been modified either. This is the one, by the way, that contains a path to where your cake core is. So it tells you it's on C column backslash PHP project backslash cake PHP 2.2.3. Some of you, uh, some of you students were telling me, hey, professor, I cannot uh, run the Timex cake PHP bare bones. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's a reason why you cannot run it because you probably do not have a PHP Projects workspace like I do, and you probably don't have a Cake PHP 2.2.3 inside that uh, workspace. You probably call it something else, just Cake PHP or whatever. So you just have to make sure that this path points to where your library of your cake PHP is. Anyway, so we don't have to do any changes there. Um, there's one more change that we have to do. Yeah, the routes. So these are the routes given to us by default. And I think we have to change the routes. So that instead of going to pages, which is it's a bare bones thing that we don't need, it was automatically baked for us. There's a controller called Pages, and the action is Display, which we don't really need. Uh, what we need really is um, that the root should connect us to the employees controller to the login action. So as soon as we hit Timex Cake, Timex Cake, it should take me to the login page. And if I try doing slash login, it will take me there as well, to the employees controller, to the login action. If I hit uh, slash register, it should take me to employees add. And if I hit timesheets, it should take me to timesheets index, which is timesheet list. But that's if I am already logged in, obviously, which is taken care of by the controller. So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to comment out the one about the pages. We don't need that. We don't have the concept of pages anymore. OK. And so since we don't have the concept of pages under the controllers, I'm just going to get rid of pages controller. And under model, I'm going to get rid of pages. We don't have pages. And under view, I'm going to get rid of pages, views. That's it. So now, if I try timesheets, wait a minute, time, time x cake, I'm sorry, if I try time x cake, Notice that when I try slash, which is the root, it takes me to, you are not authorized to access that location. Please enter your username and password. So this is where I have to authenticate. But I don't know, under this new cake PHP, probably my old passwords would not work. So I don't know any user ID that will work. So I'm going to register. And this is what registration looks like. I know it doesn't look identical to my PHP, but you guys already saw how easy it is to modify it, uh, just modify the view so that it has the same look and feel. I'm going to add this user, John 
Doe with email j doe at hotmail dot com. Employee type is one two three dash four five dash eight eight nine nine. Oh, I'm sorry, employee type, employee type. Not very user-friendly, it's an H, okay. The password is 12345. The employee uh, manager is Teresa Walker. Notice that this was already taken care of by the link. I mean, go it goes into all the employees and brings them over so that it can be pointed out as managers. Um, the username is going to be 123-45-8899. The address, 123 Main Street, City, TV, Florida. Zip code. Uh, the pay rate is going to be $48 an hour. The tax rate is going to be a 30% bracket. The registration date is fine, then, so I'm going to submit it. And now I'm back to employees timesheet. Alright, so it did redirect me to employees timesheet. I know it's showing all the timesheets. I know that's wrong, but we'll be taking care of that in a few minutes. Um, notice that after registration, I didn't have to log in, so it's doing the auto login. Um, let me take a look at the database. So I'm going to go into employees. And here's John Doe. This is the equivalent to 12345 password. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put it in all my other employees. So everybody has one two three four five as their passwords okay so now I'm going to do a logout and notice that none of my menus are going to work why because my menus are still pointing to sign in that PHP or my registration is pointing to registration.php and those things no longer work. Now what works is employees slash logout. That's what works. So now I'm logged out. And employees log in. Okay, so I'm going to log in as Mike Dover, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the password. And now I'm able to log in. No, I was not able to log in. How come? Mike Dover. One, two, three, four, five. What is this? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Login. Yeah, okay, here it is. Yes! So now I have my timesheets list for Ajay Kumar. I know it's listing all of them. And that's wrong, and I'm going to go into the code and, 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 and modify that. But, but that's basically all the changes that you have to do. Oh, and, 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 and the menus. You have to change the, 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 um, the links to the menus. So if we go into our... <coughs> if we go into our Timex cake... And we go into our view layouts into the default. Layout. Here we have 
for instance, login. Login is <clears throat> where is it? Home is no longer index. Home is now front slash. Registration is no longer registration PHP. Now is employees slash login. Or since we had a route called login, then we can just put the route login like that. Remember we created our own route called login that will take us to employees controller in action login. And uh oh I'm sorry. This is registration. login and the logout is slash logout and the registration is let me take a look at the configuration routes just to make sure in the right yeah register so we have a slash login slash oh we're missing the logout So slash logout. Where does it go? To employees logout. So registration is a slash register. <coughs> so at this point, pretty much all your ten functional requirements, you can put them in your routes, name them however you want to name them, and um here is registration and put them in your menus. So well, what about timesheets? Uh enter hours, which is a new timesheet, will be um timesheets slash add. And um unpaid timesheets is timesheets slash index and uh, pay timesheets as uh, well that's another one anyway um, so if we go back and refresh notice that localhost login oops oops sorry about that it should be it should be it should be register and it should be timesheets add timesheets index and it should be login login and logout save it so now we're back to refreshing it so now login is that register is that and new timesheet is that which I know it doesn't have the same look and feel as my PHP but you guys already know how to modify the views so that it has the same look and feel and that's it 10 functional requirements I did the entire Timex cake PHP in about two hours and out of a database and that's what I'm expecting you guys to turn in for the final. 50% of the final will be cake PHP and the other 50% will be the regular PHP with all my comments fixed. No questions? Questions? Good. I hope you guys learn a lot. I hope you guys are eager to be able to create websites now that you know PHP and in fact that you can know 
and there's a framework called KPHP. It's not the only framework, but it's one of the many frameworks. KPHP, where you can actually create a database very quickly. I mean, a website, a database-driven website very quickly. Okay, so we have accomplished our goal for this course. And thank you very much. See you next semester. Bye.